everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wild Enough Wisdom. As always, I'm your host, Zero Yeti, and this week we're doing an Australian special featuring all animals from the land down under. Uh, starting off the list is the southern cassowary, also known as the double wild cassowary, the Australian cassowary, or the two wild cassowary, it is a large flightless bird in the rat type family and is one of the three living species of cassowary alongside the dwarf cassowary and the northern cassowary. Southern double, southern double water cassowaries can be found throughout rainforest savannas and mangrove forests of Australia, Indonesia, and New Guinea. An omnivorous species, the southern cassowary feeds on a variety of fruit, seeds, nuts, fungi, insects, and small vertebrates, the latter of which they kill with their powerful blade-like claws on their feet. At over 5 feet tall and up to 130 pounds in weight, southern cassowaries consider the third largest bird on Earth after the common and Somali ostriches. Equipped with powerful legs that enable them up to run over 30 miles per hour, jump up to 7 feet in height, and deliver kicks powerful enough to break bone, cassowaries have a reputation for being dangerous to people and animals and are often considered aggressive. However, deadly encounters with cassowaries are rare with them, with only two human deaths have been reported since 1900. Generally solitary birds, southern cassowaries pair up only for the breeding season, which ranges from late winter to spring. The male builds a nest on the ground consisting of a 4 inch thick, 3 uh, foot wide mattress of herbaceous material on which the female lays 3 to 5 brightly colored green eggs. After laying, she abandons all parental care to the male, who will then both incubate the eggs and raise the chicks. After hatching, the chicks spend the next 9 months following their father wherever he goes, and, and during this period of time, the normally quiet cassowaries become quite vocal with adults communicating with their young through loud, thunderous calls, hissings, and rumblings, and the chicks responding in turn with various chips, hisses, and whistles. Over the past two decades, all cassowary species have been in decline as they face several ongoing threats, including habitat loss, feral animals eating their eggs, hunting, and vehicle collisions, leaving only about 15,000 individual southern cassowaries remaining alive in the wild today. The Woma python, also known commonly as the Ramses python, the sand python, and simply the Woma, is a species of a snake in the family Pythonidae. This Australian serpent can reach lengths of upwards of 7 feet for large females, with the smaller males typically reaching around 4 to 5 feet in length. Largely a nocturnal species, by day the snake can be found sheltering in burrows and hollow logs or under leaf debris. When traveling across hot sands, it is noted, uh for its ability to lift part of its body off the ground, reaching forward and then pushing off the ground again, leaving only over a few inches of its body touching the hot ground at a single time, thus reducing skin burns that are common on some other snakes found in deserts. The Woma python feeds upon a variety of terrestrial vertebrates such as small mammals, ground birds, lizards, and even other snakes, because it usually catches much of its prey in burrows where there is not enough room to maneuver coils around its prey in a, const in a typical constricting method, the woma python put instead pushes a loop of its body against the animal to pin it against the side of the burrow as it slowly suffocates it. This is more dangerous than the traditional constricting method and takes longer, and many adult uh, woma pythons are covered in scars from retaliating prey. Woma pythons breed year-round depending on the local weather, with females typically laying a clutch between 5 and 20 eggs, after which the mother remains coiled around the eggs until they hatch, with the incubation period lasting 2-3 to three months. After hatching, the young are on their own and will reach sexual maturity around 2 years of age, with a maximum lifespan of around 20 years. A critical endangered species in the wild, Woma python faces many threats such as habitat loss, predation by foxes, feral pigs, and feral cats, and in particular predation by the king brown snake, which has made many reinduction efforts of this species difficult, and the future of the wild python may soon be restricted to captive breeding populations. Though fortunately, it does do well in captivity and can be found in zoos and aquariums worldwide. Next up is the northern hairy-nosed wombat, also known as the Yamanon. It is the largest of the three extant species of wombat and can weigh upwards of 80 pounds and more than 3.5 feet long. Compared with the bare-nosed wombat, the hairy-nosed wombats have softer fur, longer and more pointed ears, and a broader muzzle that are fringed with fine whiskers. With the northern wombats preferring, uh, differing from the southern hairy-nosed wombats by a longer, very square muzzle, uniformly darker pelage and nasal bones. 
Northern hairy-nosed wombat is nocturnal, escaping the harsh weather of the Australian day by using its strong claws and powerful legs to dig up to ten feet down into the earth. They live in complex communal burrows housing up to ten individuals, and the burrows can be incredibly complex, with hundreds of feet of subterranean tunnels along with nesting and feeding chambers, all of which have multiple discrete entrances that the wombats mark with scratches and their signature square-shaped square poop. Northern hairy-nosed wombats give birth to one young, usually in the warmer months between November and April, and the young stay in the mother's pouch for eight to nine months and are fully dependent at roughly two years of age. Females have backward-facing pouches so that the, when the mother digs, the pouch doesn't fill up with dirt. Like all wombats, they are herbivorous, with their diet being mainly made up of grasses, herbs, shrewts, roots, fungi, and tubers. As recently as a hundred years ago, hairy-nosed wombats roamed across New South Wales, Victoria, and Queensland, but today they can only be found in the wild in just two locations, the Epping Forest National Park in, cent in central Queensland and the Richard Underwood Natural Ref Nature Refuge near St. George. The wombats face many threats such as droughts, wildfires, floods, competition from invasive species such as rabbits for food, and the predation from wild dogs. Due to these ongoing factors, only 230 her northern herringless wombats remain alive in the wild today. On the list is the freshwater crocodile, also known as the Australian freshwater crocodile. Johnstone's crocodile, or colloquially known as the freshie, is a species of crocodile endemic to the northern regions of Australia. At 7 to 13 feet in length and 150 to 250 pounds in weight, they can be easily distinguished from their much larger relative, the saltwater crocodile, by their size, temperament, and slender snout. It is typically blight brown in color, possessing distinctive bands along its back and tail, along with the speckling on its snout. They inhabit freshwater wetlands, billabogs, rivers, and streams, where they act as ambush predators for crustaceans, insects, spiders, fish, frogs, turtles, snakes, birds, and small mammals. Freshies themselves are preyed upon by saltwater crocodiles and olive pythons. And unlike the much larger saltwater crocodile, freshwater crocodiles are not known to be man-eaters and are actually quite skittish. Although they will attack in self-defense, there have been no known fatalities from freshwater crocodiles in within a hundred years. Freshwater crocodiles are polygynous in their mating system, where each male mates with one or more females. Mating typically occurs in winter between August and September, after which the female digs a nest along the riverbank and lays between 13 and 20 eggs in one night. As the offspring hatch out after about 65 days of incubation, the female is noted for carrying them to the water in their mouth. Over the next several weeks, the female remains with the young, protecting and caring for them, but after a month or so, she leaves her offspring on their own. Male freshwater crocodiles reach sexual maturity at 16 years old, whereas females mature at 14 years of age, with both sexes routinely known to live 50 years of age. The Laughing Kookaburra, also known as the Laughing Kingfisher and the Laughing Jackass, it is a bird in the subfamily Halocyanae. At 19 inches long and over 1 pound in weight, this robust kingfisher is one of the largest in its family and can be characterized by a whitish head and a brown eye stripe. The upper parts of the body are mostly dark brown, with the underparts being a creamy white color, and the tail is usually barred black. The laughing kookaburra is well known for its territorial call that resembles a distinctive laugh, and is often delivered by several birds at the same time as both a predator warning call and a territorial display. Laughing kookaburra is native to eastern mainland Australia, but has been introduced to parts of New Zealand, Tasmania, and western Australia. Here it occupies dry eucalyptus forests, woodland, city parks, and gardens often near water sources. A predator of a variety of small animals, including lizards, insects, small mammals, birds, worms, sna uh, birds, worms snakes, and fish. The Laughing kookaburra typically waits perched on a branch until it sees an animal on the ground and then flies down and pounces on its prey. The laughing kookaburra is a monogamous species, retaining the same partner for life. They are social birds, living in family groups consisting of a breeding pair, their chicks, and up to five fully grown non-breeding offspring from previous years that help the parents defend their territory and raise the young. The laughing kookaburra generally nests in unlined tree cavities or excavated holes in termite nests. Uh, typically laying three to three white eggs, which are incubated by the parents and siblings for 24 days. After hatchling, the 
after hatching, the young are fed and raised by the group for six to ten weeks until they are able to forage independently. Next up is the shingleback lizard, also known as the yorn, the two-headed skink, the stumpy-tailed skink, or the bogey, uh, the pinecone lizard, and the sleeping lizard. That's a lot of names. It is a, it is a species of sne skink found, th uh, found throughout the continent of Australia. It has two pounds, 12-inch long body, is heavily armored, and can be found in various colors ranging from dark brown to light cream. It has a short, wide, stumpy tail that resembles and acts as a false head to confuse potential predators. The tail also contains fat reserves, which are drawn upon during brumation in winter. A diurnal species, the shingleback can be found throughout air, forests, shrub, shrublands, grasslands, and desert environments, where it feeds upon snails, worms, arthropods, carrion, grasses, and flowers. Shinglebacks themselves are preyed upon by dingoes, pythons, birds of prey, foxes, and cats. Unlike most lizards, shinglebacks are social animals that form monogamous pairs that have been known to return to each other every year for up to 20 years. They breed from September through November, and these lizards are viparous, giving birth, live birth, to broods of up to one to four relatively large offspring. The gestation period usually lasts around five months, and the young are born well-developed uh, and weigh about one-fourth to one-third of a pound. The young are raised by their parents for four to six months before striking off on their own, but they typically remain in close proximity, forming and living in a colony of closely related skinks. And our extinct animal of the week, the Tasmanian tiger, the Tasmanian wolf, or the thylacine, which is an extinct carnivorous marsupial that was once native to the Australian mainland and the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. It stood two feet tall at the shoulder, six feet in length, and weighed around between 30 and 50 pounds, with males being slightly larger than females. The thylacine is notable for having several unique characteristics in modern marsupials, including a fairly weak jaw, but that was able to open some 80 degrees. Both sexes sported rear-forward facing pouches, um, and is in fact just one of two known marsupials in which both sexes are known to have pouches the other being the uh, poke, or the water opossum, that we covered in last week's video. The thylacine sported short, dense fur characterized by a distinctive striped pattern prompting the common name of the Tasmanian tiger. It is noted as having a stiff and somewhat awkward gait, making it unable to run at high speeds, but easily able to travel long distances. It could also perform a bipedal hop in a fashion similar to a kangaroo which captive specimens uh, demonstrated various times. Uh, this allowed the animal to balance on its hind legs and stand upright for brief periods of time. Also enabled the animal to move faster than it would typically by running and could possibly use an escape method when facing predators. The thylacine preferred dry eucalyptus forests, wetlands, and grasslands of mainland Australia, while in Tasmania it preferred the woodlands and midlands of the coast and coastal hearth. Uh, it was a largely nocturnal and crepuscular animal, spending daylight hours in small caves or hollowed out tr tree trunks in a nest of twigs, bark, or fern fronds emerging at night to hunt. The Tasmanian tiger was a social animal, Living and hunting in small family groups, a persistent pursuit predator, the thylacine pack would have worked together as a team to single out one prey item and then pursue it until the prey item was exhausted. Prey is believed to have been found in the form including of kangaroos, wallabies, bandicoots, possums, wombats, emus, and other ground birds. Thylacines bred year-round with the mothers giving birth between two and four joeys carrying the young in a pouch for up to three months. The young will then stay with the family pack until fully grown before venturing out on their own to start their own family packs. Thylacines can live between five and ten years, and it's thought that competition with both humans and dingoes drove the thylacine to extinction on mainland Australia some 2,000 years ago. Although extinct on the mainland, it survived, uh, it survived in to the 1930s on the island state of Tasmania, where it unfortunately rampant hunting by European settlers and the extinction of several common prey species led to the population plummeting.
The final nail in the coffin for the thylacine came in the form of a distemper-like disease, which likely jumped to thylacines by infected foxes and dogs. The last captive thylacine, often referred to as Benjamin, lived at the Hobart, Hobart Zoo until its death at, on a particularly cold night of the 6th of September, 1936, when it succumbed to hypothermia after its keeper forgot to open the hatch to its heated shelter. There is some good news to the story of the thylacine, however, as in 2017, the thylacine genome was officially sequenced. This gives hope to the idea that we may one day clone and resurrect the Tasmanian tiger. As always, I have been your host, Zerietti. Take care to my guys, gals, and my binary pals.